on so I can see them. Um, and now we need to do the layout length of a cylinder. Now, when I say layout length, if you took a cylinder and, and cut one side of it and laid it out, it would be how long the cylinder is laid out in 2D. Okay, And the layout length is simply the, the circumference of the circular view. Okay, So I can click on the, uh, the circular view of the cylinder and go to properties and I can see that the circumference is 3.1416. Okay. So let me just draw a line straight down, just like I did uh, for the um, the cube, and then TR enter enter, and I'll trim off the excess here, okay? And then I'll offset by 3.1416, okay? All right, so that's what the layout length of the um, the cylinder would be. All right, so now I need to switch to my visible layer, and I will just simply just trace over. Um, the construction lines I made. Okay, and that's um, that's the cylindrical part. Now we need to uh, enclose the object. Now, uh, don't forget to watch the seams and enclosures video. Um, and quite a few of my instructions for the developments, I say, to create a fully enclosed object, and that makes means it's fully enclosed. Okay, uh, like the cylinder would be open on both ends. Well, we want to close it by putting caps on, and also. Um, a lot of my instructions say to, <clears throat> to add single lap seams. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but um, that's basically um, where the edges meet. You'll need some kind of material uh, to make that possible. Okay, um, but that video will go in, uh, into detail on that. Okay, so to make my ends end caps basically on the cylinder, I'll just simply copy the circle and I'll grab it by its quadrant point and just snap it to a corner. Okay. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom, except I'll grab this one by its top point. Now, if you can imagine, if you had this layout length, you could kind of, if it were paper, um, it might be easier to visualize. You could just kind of <clears throat> make sure that this end, let me explode that so I can differentiate, that this end meets that end, okay? And that when they come together, if you don't fold it anywhere in between, it'll make a, a circular shape, okay, in, in a perfect world. But uh, that's kind of the thought behind that. And notice there are no folding lines because you wouldn't fold it. And then uh, after you brought these edges together, you would have these two circles uh, to meet edge to edge with the um, um, the cylindrical part. Always, always remember this when you're turning in your developments. Edges that meet in your development should be the same length. If you can remember that, you will do well in this course. Okay. This is what I mean. Uh, when you fold this up, this edge meets the circumference of the circle. Okay. Uh, go to properties. That's 3.1416. Go to properties on that line. That's 3.1416. They're the same length, and they should be because when you fold them up, they're the same. They're the same edge. Okay. So that's that layout. And then lastly, we have the pyramid. Now it's a four-sided pyramid. Okay. Um, you have four triangular sides and then you have a bottom to make sure it's fully enclosed. Um, the most difficult thing about this is you need to find the true size of this triangle, okay? Because when I'm looking at this uh, from the front view here, uh, then that is not the, um, the true... Get my right side view back here. That is not the, the true size and shape of that, that triangle because it's leaning away from you. Okay, <clears throat> To be able to see that triangle in its true size and shape, you have to be able to look at it perpendicularly, which is where an auxiliary view will come in handy. So I'll just type L and then enter and then PER and then enter and I'll snap to that edge. I need to be on my construction layer and then I'll move it and copy. Make sure that your, um, your object snaps are turned on. Now I need to take a measurement. Okay, and I'll just, I can take it from really anywhere along this base. I can measure from here to here, which is one. Here to here is one. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I'll actually just offset um, by a distance of one that line right there. Okay, and then I'll TR, enter, enter, and get rid of the um, 
parts of the construction line I don't need. Okay, so <clears throat> now that I've done that, um, I know that the base will be a distance of one, which I've already found. So I'm on my visible layer. So I'll just go ahead and draw that line. Okay, now this point up here meets halfway. So for example, from here to here should be 0 0.5, which is also the same distance as from here to here. So that's exactly where that line will intersect the top there, which happens to be the midpoint. Okay, now if, if for some reason, let me go ahead and finish that thought, and then I'll go back and um, add something. Okay, so that's what that triangle looks like in true size and shape. Now, you couldn't do that if, say, for example, you notice I just snapped to the uh, the end point there. If I had drawn the, or the midpoint, if I had drawn the line that long, of course I couldn't snap to the midpoint. You'd have to measure it off. So so be careful about how you do that part. Okay. But that's what the true size and shape of that triangle looks like. So what I'll do, I'll just simply copy it out. All right. And then I'll make uh, make copies of it. So CP enter. I'll just grab it by base point make four copies and then I'll copy out the bottom of the object okay because I know I'm looking at the bottom of this object perpendicularly so I know it's in its true size and shape so now I just need to put them together okay so I'll use the align command and then enter and I'll select one of the triangles and then enter now it asked me to specify the first source point so I'll pick a point on the triangle now it asked me to specify the first destination point that's where I where do I want this point to go which is here. Okay. Now it asks me to specify a second source point. I'll pick another point there. And ask me to specify a second destination point and I'll pick a point here and then I'll hit enter twice. Okay. So that works pretty well. Now there's a couple of things that can go wrong here. One side of this triangle has a length of one. The other two sides have a different length. Okay. Uh, again, edges that come together should be the same length alright so make sure that you try to align the correct edge so I'll use a line again first source to first destination second source to second destination enter enter okay and I'll use the same command again and I'm hopefully I'm going to demonstrate something that can go wrong here Yes. Okay. You see how it flipped the triangle the wrong way? No big deal. Okay. It's just it was because the triangle was tilted the wrong way, and it'll it'll try to to um, uh, anyway it'll 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 snap it to the correct place, but it, it flipped its orientation. So you have to watch that. But you can use the mirror command to correct that. Okay. So that was the other thing that can go wrong with the align command. Okay. And then finally. So that's almost our completed development. Now um, the only thing we need to do is to, these aren't visible lines actually, <clears throat> these are folding lines. This is where you would fold the object. So I'll just click on those and switch those to the folding layer. Okay, And that's what the uh, final development looks like. And of course, just like every other development, it'll have its own layout sheet, which will be something um, along those lines there. But again, I have a, another video that covers, uh, covers layouts. So uh, hopefully that'll help you through the initial stages of learning um, developments. It is a little awkward at first, but uh, the more you work with it, the, the more comfortable you'll get with it. And that concludes this video.